guys. This is Vapor Chasers and today we're going to rechar an oak barrel. I've been able to find a, a, a company that ships used barrels from other distilleries from all over the country. They, they take them, empty them out, and after that, the brokerage house, they'll sell them to, to regular guys like you and me. Um, what I've done in the past is I just take, remove the hoops, go in, clean everything out, get a lot of the old charcoal out of there, then after that I use a weed burner torch everything, get a good char on it, then after that I use it to store all of my bourbon in. And uh, I introduce a little bit of virgin oak as well, that way we can get some of those, those raw oak flavors. But so far it's been awesome. Everything that I've made using these barrels has been phenomenal. I've got some single malt going, I've got about a 30 gallon barrel full of bourbon. I've actually drank most of it, I think, probably about half of it anyway. Um, that's how good it is. Um, I will put it on par with anything that you buy off the shelf. So nonetheless, being that we've started a, a bourbon project recently, I wanted to go ahead and get the barrel done, show you guys how I do it, because I can't really find any of these resources online. I kind of had to stumble through the process myself and, and really teach myself how to do this. And I thought that maybe you folks would appreciate seeing how somebody else does it. So if you get a wild hair and decide to order one of these barrels, you can learn how to reseal it and, and char it and, and use it to, to store your own spirits in. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. All right, here she is, guys. Uh, this is a 20-gallon barrel. Uh, I think I picked it up for, I don't know, maybe 60, 80 bucks, shipped to the house. I'd, I'd actually have to go and look. I ordered it about 10 months ago. And when I first got it, it had actually been sitting out in the yard, I'm assuming, after it had been emptied. Uh, the bung was still in it, um, but it had dried up some, and so it was uh, uh, it was a bit leaky. Uh, some, of these, some of these cracks had actually started to open up. So what I did is a few months back is I took and sat this thing inside of a, a blue plastic storage container and I filled it about halfway with water and allowed the entire thing to soak in all that, that moisture. And then after about a month, I flipped it over, refilled it, and uh, all of the seams have now swollen. You can see where I actually pulled the bung out and emptied it and you see some of the, uh, the charcoal that's uh, flaked off from the inside. Um, all of the water smelled just like the bourbon that this uh, keg used to hold. Um, so now what I've got to do is go through and down here on the outside is pull some of these nails so I can get these three hoops off. All right, uh, basic tools you're going to need um, are obviously a hammer. And then this is a cat's paw. It's specifically for prying out nails. Um, so what you have to do is just kind of go in from the side. Now all the nails are actually squared and they're T-shaped. So you just want to go in sideways, give it a couple of taps. And then let's do it one more time. And grab a pair of pliers, give her a couple of twists in the pool. And then there we have the nail. All right guys, here you can see the nails that were used to keep the hoops in place after everything was assembled. One of them bent a little bit. I'll end up putting that in the vise and then kind of crimping it until it's straight again. Uh, nonetheless, uh, the next thing we've got to do is get this top hoop off. Um, but before I do that, I want to go ahead and mark the lid. Um, I want to be able to put this lid back in the original location that it's already used to being seated in. Now we're going to seal everything up using a little bit of paraffin wax regardless, but at the same time I'd like to put everything pretty much exactly where it was. So what I'm really doing here is just using the, the flat edge of this, uh, this little pry bar, this cat's paw, and that way I'll put a nick in both the side of the barrel as well as the head, and that way when it's time to reassemble it, all I've got to do is line those two marks up. So there we go, we've got a nice little mark right there, and let's make that one a little deeper. So, as you can see right there, we've got a decent little mark. Sorry, me. seeing there's the mark. So, whenever we go to put this thing back together, I just got to match up one mark with the other, and we'll know we're back exactly where we were supposed to be. All right, what I use to hammer the hoops off with is literally this is just a bike peg nothing special uh, my son had some laying around from BMX bike he used to have and being that he doesn't have that bike anymore this is what I used to get the hoops off so as you can see I've already mushroomed the top of this thing pretty well but it's got a pretty decent flat surface and what I do is just go up underneath the hoop and slowly but surely work my way around so it's going to take me probably 20-30 minutes to get this hoop off she's pretty well stuck I've got a little bit of a lip going on this side, so I'm going to start here and work my way around. But uh, when you rejoin me, I'll be removing the top hoop, and then we'll just keep working at it. Well, that actually took a hell of a lot less time than I thought it was. I started working on this side, and she just came right free. So, you can pull this one off, set it to the side, 
So I'm going to reassemble as far as orientation is concerned. It's fairly simple. Just line the, the uh, whatever the hell those are, dots up whenever you put it back together. But nonetheless, uh, let's start working on the second one. <clears throat> After we get the second one off or loosen, what we're going to do is actually put the top hoop back on and then we can keep everything compressed so that we can work on the middle hoop. All right, she's moving pretty quickly, so uh, I'm going to do some of this on camera. Let's see. see, she's wiggling pretty quickly. There we go. That one's so bad. There we go. That one to the side. Now we're going to reinstall the top hoop. Doesn't have to be perfect, but that way the wood doesn't spread apart uh, completely whenever we get ready to uh, pull the third hoop off. That should be enough to keep everything together. And she's pretty much there. That's it. Perfect. All right. Top hoop back off. There it is. All right. See how the wood started to expand immediately? All right, here's the fun part. It's a good thing we already had a mark, which is right here. What I'm gonna do is lightly tap these staves, get them spread apart. After that, we're gonna be able to punch the lid, turn it, and pull it out. Sorry, let me set that tool to the side. Just like the petals of a flower. See how well that's sealed? That's why we wanted to mark it so we can get it exactly the same spot so we know it's going to seal up just as tight. All right. Almost there. Get her out and good. She's still wet. She was full of water until this morning, which is fine. And you can actually see one of the pins I used to line everything up with. So all I gotta do is tap that back together. And like I said, we're gonna use some paraffin wax on this bad boy anyway. Set that to the side and I'll show you guys what she looks like on the inside. And that's it. You see all the flakes of charcoal that have come off the sides of this. You can see some all in here. So what I'm going to do now is uh, set this thing up on a sawhorse probably. We're going to scrape off a lot of this loose flaky charcoal. And after that, we're going to get the propane burner. We're going to torch this bad boy. Alright, before I do anything further, I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the top hoop. That way she keeps the shape together. Um, I don't want her to stay spread out like this while I'm working on it. So I'm going to tap on the second hoop to close up the top, get the top hoop on, and then we'll go from there. That should be enough, I think. Good, good, good. Good. All right. That's what we were looking for. All right, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said, I just want to keep it together while we're scraping, etc. Um, so now I'm going to get this bad boy set up. And then we'll start scraping all the charcoal off the inside. All right, guys, what I have here is actually the tool that I made to reinstall the head with. As you can see, I just took a, I don't know, this is probably a half inch, three quarter inch piece of pipe. Actually, half inch. It says it right there. And what I did is I pounded the edge flat and then I curved it over. And that way, when it's time to reinstall the head, we can put it in sideways and I can pull it up and into place. Um, but more on that later. I'm actually going to use this to clean off all this flaky carbon off the inside. Now, I'm not trying to get down to bare wood, guys. It'd be a waste of time to do that. What I'm trying to do is get rid of this old charcoal. I don't care that the wood's soaked and it still has the flavor of somebody else's bourbon. It's not that big of a deal. It's only going to impart a little bit of age and flavor to mine. So all I'm really going to do is go through and scrape all of this to get all of this loose carbon off. And then after that, we're going to set this bad boy on fire. 
All right, guys, we just finished rinsing her out. As you can see, we scraped the majority of the charcoal off of the inside, all the loose, flaky stuff. We actually got down to bare wood in a couple of spots where it flaked pretty well. But nonetheless, I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like after we've completed that process. Probably going to give it one more good rinse, and then after that, we'll be ready to, uh, we'll be ready to rechar it. All right, guys, here we go. I've got a propane burner here. Uh, weed burner, I don't know what they call these things. Anyways, this is what I've used the last couple of times and it works really, really well. So uh, let's uh, light her up. I uh, just want you to know I do have a garden hose right here um, so I can put this fire out if she starts to get out of control and I've got a rock to keep this thing from rolling around. So uh, let's see what we can do. char and I'll just put her out. Alright guys here's what we've got. We'll take a look. You can see how we got some good texture in there and some good scaling. That's what they usually call an alligator char. Um, nonetheless now begins the least fun part. Reassembly. Uh, we'll pull the stop ring. It'll open up like a flower once again. Everything spreads out and we got to get this top in. Um, I took the time to uh, reestablish my mark. It had sort of gotten charred, but here we have it right here so I can line that up with the top. All right, let's get this off. There she is. Still warm, actually. All right. Mark. Line it up. That's a little closer. All right. That may be enough for me to take her down. Pretty darn close. Take it down a little bit more. All right, let's see if we can start the top hoop. That's gonna be about where she needs to be. Good. I don't want to keep you guys here watching me do this. You can see how we've got everything lined up in the groove. So everything is going to close right up after that. Um, I'm going to drive this top hoop down. Then after that, we'll line up the second hoop, get it in its final location. When you join me again, I'll be ready to put the tacks back into their original locations. And then we're going to put some wax all in this seal. So give me a few minutes and I'll be right back. All right, guys. I don't know about you, but I'm tired. It's uh, pounding these hoops back in. There's a real pain in the butt. Um, using the block was okay. I ended up actually using the other side of the hammer so I could get it right on the edge. Um, but regardless, we're here now. Uh, so everything's lined back up exactly where it was to the point where the actual pinholes are exactly on point. I'll try to do this without busting my fingers. All right, 
and now it's time to uh, melt some wax. Guys, this is pretty much it. But, uh, after this, I would suggest filling it with water just to make sure any of these uh, seams that have opened up have a chance to swell and seal back up. And after that, you need to fill it up with whatever spirit you decide. Now, Technically, bourbon is 100% is virgin American oak that's been toasted. Got it. So, technically, this isn't bourbon. This would just be whiskey. But, I don't know about you, but I don't have $600 sitting around to buy a brand new oak barrel. And when I can pick one of these up for roughly 80 bucks, and then literally in the span of, I don't know, three, three and a half hours, I mean, we started this around 10.30, it's just now 2 o'clock. We've completely disassembled, stripped, and recharred this barrel to get it ready to start aging whiskey. Um, to me, for 80 bucks, you just can't afford not to do it. Uh, the other part that I had mentioned was that I would use some virgin American oak. And I actually have some right here. And I got from a local uh, supplier. And the guy actually goes through and cuts and mills his own lumber. So here I have a fresh piece of American white oak. What I will end up doing is cutting off about a one foot section of this, toasting in the oven probably 350, 40, uh, 400 degrees for about an hour. And then after that, um, I'll split it into staves, drop it right into the bung hole, and then I've got brand new fresh virgin American oak to go inside of this barrel to help flavor this whiskey. All right, hopefully you guys made it this far and have watched the entire video. Uh, we just finished up buttoning up the barrel. Um, uh, I misquoted earlier, it was actually a 26 gallon barrel that we just finished uh, recouping, if you want to call it that. Nonetheless, uh, I took a, a look uh, in the meantime to figure out what the name of the company was, and it was Mystic Barrels. You can find them online, and they're literally just a brokerage for, for used barrels. Uh, distilleries will empty out their barrels. Um, uh, after you know aging their wine and spirits and then they resell those barrels on the market and they'll ship them directly to your house um, and this is the second barrel that I bought from Mystic Barrels they've been in good condition like I said you always want to take some time fill them up with some water and swell them back out because they've probably been dry for a little while but uh, I haven't had an issue with one not sealing back up uh, just yet so um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the content if you did hit the like button I'd appreciate it and uh, also you may want to subscribe because I've got a couple of batches going in the garage right now I've got about a 40 gallon barrel full of uh, UJSN, uh, UJSSM god that's a tongue twister and the other is about an 80 pound 50 60 gallon batch of bourbon I took some uh, malted barley a little bit of wheat and some corn and, and that's going right now so um, if you follow along and you keep up with the content you'll eventually get to the point where we fill that barrel that we took the time to recoup and who knows maybe a couple of years from now we can uh we can join uh join up together and, and do a tasting so um once again thanks for following along i hope you got some value out of this and uh you know if you don't mind like and subscribe until next time